Hello, I'm Wayne Partridge, a Christian businessman. Welcome to part four, Purgatory. By the way, it's not in the Bible, it's heresy. And the Catholics also have categorized sin in two parts. One, mortal sin, which is the greater, and venial sin, which is a lesser transgression. That's not in the Bible either, that's also heresy. Now, we have to know that every church has got to be founded and grounded on the Word of God. It has to teach and preach God's Word. Outside of that, it's no good. As Christ our Savior died, so too must mere mortals. As He rose, so shall all human beings. Death is the only way to cross from this life into the next. At the very moment of death, private judgment occurs. Christ judges the soul. Now we're talking about souls. If a soul is particularly holy and virtuous, the soul goes directly to heaven. If the soul is wicked and dies in mortal sin, it's damned for eternity in hell. If a person lived a life bad, not bad enough to warrant hell, but not holy enough to go right to heaven, Catholics, now this is Catholics, believe the soul goes to purgatory, which is a middle ground between heaven and earth, a state where departed souls want to be cleansed from any attachment to sin before going through the pearly gates. It gets worse. Besides purgatory, which is not in the Bible, there's another one called indulgence. In the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, an indulgence is a way to reduce the amount of punishment one has to undergo for sins. It may reduce the temporal punishment for sin after death as opposed to the eternal punishment merited by mortal sin in the state or process of purification called purgatory. And it goes on. I found this also in their doctrines as soon as the money in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory's fire springs. The little jingle there says it all. The Roman Catholics sell indulgences. They have for centuries and they're still doing it. You can buy your way out of purgatory. And all of that is part of the biggest lie ever told by the Roman Catholic Church. And I'm not going to spend much time on that. I want to show you what the Bible says. And it is heresy. The Roman Catholic Church is not a church anymore. It's a club. And it's an easy club to belong to because they make up their own rules. And, you know, if something seems to be too harsh, like uh, going to hell for everlasting life that the Bible says, that seems to be a little harsh, so let's soften it up. Let's inv invent purgatory. And then let's have it where you can buy your way out. We'll make money. Second Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Now Luke 16. And it came to pass that the beggar died. We're in the middle of Christ telling about these two men. And the beggar was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. 
And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, plural, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And the rich man cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And this is what I want you to get a hold of. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Look at that again. A great gulf fixed, so you cannot pass back and forth like purgatory. Last here is the great white throne judgment which happens at the end of the world. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead, or that's the lost, or the unsaved, were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell gave, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were ju judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, or the spiritual death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The Bible says there, that God tells the rich man who died and is in hell and in the torments of hell that there is a great gulf fixed and you cannot get out of hell. You can't pass back and forth like buying your way out with an indulgence. That is a fabricated lie from the Catholic Church. It will never happen. It never has happened. Once a person dies in their sin, they end up in hell. They will be there until the end of the world, and then they will be called up before the great white throne judgment. The books will be opened. They'll stand there naked before the very God, Jesus Christ, who died for their sins. And then they will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Luke 16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I'm going to heaven today because I am trusting in God's Word and the Bible. That's God's Word. And if you're trusting in the Roman Catholic Church to go to heaven, and if you believe their doctrine the way it's brought out, you'll go to hell. There will be no purgatory and no indulgence to buy your way out. That is all heresy. John 3.16 tells us the story that God loved you and I enough that he gave his son on the cross of Calvary so that if we would trust and believe in that, we could be saved and not perish in the flames of hell but have everlasting life. And I'm going to tell you that if the Pope the cardinals, the bishops, the priests, and you do not believe that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for your sin. And if you don't ask God to forgive you for your sin and for God to save you 
and to save your soul and to change you and make you a new person, uh, the Pope and all those will end up in hell. They'll split hell wide open. They'll stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment, staying naked there, not as a priest, but as a sinner bound for the lake of fire for eternity. Most of those people that, are, that will stand before the great white throne will be Catholics because they have been deceived by the Catholics. Revelation 17, St. John is showing us here the whore, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. In verse 15, and he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. God showing us there that the harlot in Revelation 17 is the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has multitudes and nations as members. And it's so easy to belong to because really it's not a church, it's a club. And they're deceiving those millions and billions. And friend, I would like to pray with you. If you would like to be genuinely saved the Bible way like I am, I'll pray a prayer with you right now and ask that you would follow with me and be saved right now. <clears throat> Father in heaven, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. And I would ask you would forgive me for my sin and come into my life, come into my soul, and save me. Save my soul. Make me a new person. Change me to be a new person, a saved person. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you were sincere about that, you will be saved, and you will change. The Bible says that you will become a new creature. Old things will pass away. Everything becomes new. That's the way it was in my life. I'm trusting, and I'm trusting in the Bible. I'm trusting that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I believe that in my heart. And I confess that with my mouth, the Lord Jesus. And I know I'm saved. I was saved November 4th, 1971. And I'm still there. And it's my prayer for you that you did get saved and that you will get out of the Catholic Church. <clears throat>